SwiftUI gives us access to a number of environment keys that describe the user's accessibility settings. These are worth taking the time to learn and respect in your programs. Now, back in Project 15, we looked at labels and hints and traits and groups and more, but these are different. They're provided through the environment, which means SwiftUI will watch them. So if the user leaves our app, goes to the iOS settings application and enables some of these options and returns to our app, it'll re-invoke our body property so we can respond to the new values. For example, one of the options we have available to us is called differentiate without color, which is helpful for the one in 12 men who have color blindness of some form. Now, when this is enabled, when it's true, uh, apps like ours should try and make their UIs clearer using shapes, icons, and textures rather than just colors. To try it out, go ahead and add a new key property to your um, SwiftUI view, at environment, backslash dot, accessibility, differentiate without color. I'll call this thing var differentiate without color. And we can try it out. We could say, um, show the text success uh, with a green background behind it when we have colors. Otherwise, show an icon next to it and use a black background so the white stands out better on the black. We could say here, uh, there's a H stack. And if we are differentiating without color, use image system name check mark dot circle like that. And then a text of success. So we know it works. Then we'll add a padding around it. Use a background. If we are using, if we answer, aren't using color, we'll use a plain black background so it stands out nice and contrasty. Otherwise, it's a green background. Then we'll add a foreground color of white and then a clip shape of capsule. To try it out, go ahead and press Command R. Now you can see here it's uh, green background, white text. What you can do is if you uh, perhaps put the one side of Xcode over here, perhaps so you can sort of see what's going on more easily. There we go. Um, down here in Xcode is this little sort of toggle switch option down here. And these are called environment overrides. As you activate that now, you can see you can toggle on the whole accessibility group and then say, I want to differentiate without color. And you'll see immediately our UI snaps in, color goes away, icon appears automatically. It's really, really nice. And I also had a moment ago, I think over in settings, this is the really helpful uh, debug options you can get to. There's not many of them. Uh, in this case, you can see all the accessibility stuff, which is great. Um, this is just like I usually see them on the real iPhone, just not with you know bits missing at the bottom down here, sadly. But anyway, display and text size, you can do it here as well if you want to. You can say this, but it's much easier to use the environment overrides down here to see immediately from Xcode, which is nice. So that's cool. Um, another helpful one, let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, so it's off, great, uh, is called Reduce Motion. And it's again available uh, in the settings application for iOS and simulator under Motion. Here it is. Or more easily inside here, just check uh, Reduce Motion here. And this is enabled, apps like ours should limit the amount of animation that causes movement on the screen. So fading in and out is fine, just don't make things move around a lot it makes people go a bit dizzy. Um, for example, uh, if we look at the app switcher, if I just press uh, Shift Command and double tap H, we get this sort of movement like this, yeah? If we reduce motion and then try it, uh, nothing will happen, cool. That, oh, that's for our app, sorry. Reduce motion system-wide, let's try that. There we go. Now it works correctly. So you're seeing you get sort of fade effect now instead. So it's adjusting the animation to be look different, which is quite nice. Um, so this obviously only works for our app, that system wide, clearly. Anyway, let's leave it off now and give it a try. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just zap all this code because it's mostly useless. Boom. We'll change our environment key. So it's not different about color, but, diff uh, but reduce motion. There we go. And then we'll have reduce motion. Then I'll say there's an at state private var scale of 1.0 that will scale around up and down to do things. Inside here, we'll do text hello world again. Hello world. How about just hello world, Hudson? There we go. Uh, with a scale effect, 
of our scale value. And we have an on top of this thing, I'll say, if we're reducing the motion, do scale multiply equals 1.5. So just get bigger every time. Otherwise, we'll do scale star equals 1.5, but I'll wrap that in with animation. So it animates getting bigger every time it's tapped. So I'll press Command R now. And we should find, I can press on this, slides up, slides up, slides up. Let's do it again. This time I'll enable the environment override. So down here, I'll say override with reduced motion. And then tap on it, it jumps up immediately. So there's no more motion. And again, as you saw live in my video, uh, you can go to the settings app and enable it system-wide for every application, which actually honors this, of course. Um, I don't know about you, but I find this approach a bit annoying, having to write my logic twice, so I want this and this. You know, for more complex animations, it'd be very frustrating. And so, um, it's a good idea, I would say, to write a little wrapper around this uh, with animation function. It'll use uh, UI kits underlying UI accessibility uh, wrapper. We can read is reduced motion available from there here, right in our code. So we could say something like this. Funk with optional animation. This has to be given some kind of result to work with. So we'll just do a result. That's not Swift UI's type, there's a generic value as you saw with um, decoding of codable stuff earlier. Uh, we're gonna give it an animation here, which will be default by default. Then some body code we're gonna run that will throw and return whatever it is the result that comes back. It might be a Boolean or who knows what, or nothing at all perhaps. Like that. We'll then mark the whole thing as being rethrows and returns a result. What that means is this function with optional animation will throw errors if the body we're doing, like in this case, scale 1.5, if that thing can throw errors, then with animation will throw errors, or in our case, with optional animation will throw errors. So we're saying it'll return whatever the result of our code was. In this case, scale uh, star equals 1.5 will return nothing at all, but you might return a value from there. Anyway, inside here, we're going to say, if UI accessibility dot is reduced motion enabled, then return try the body. Else return try with animation, animation body, like that. So this body thing here is the code we want to animate. That's what we're saying. In our case, it'll be scale star equals 1.5. If we have reduce motion available enabled, just go ahead and do that thing immediately with try, because it might throw. If it's not enabled, use with animation, passing in the animation we asked for, plus the same body. So it'll animate it. And with that in place, our code becomes simpler. We can remove this whole if from here, like this, and say instead, with optional animation. And now, it'll only work if we have reduced motion enabled. It'll only have, sorry, only disable the animation if that's enabled. I'll press here, animate smoothly, great. I'll toggle the switch, you're on, and now it'll just jump up every time. So it means not repeating our animation code again, again, again. It'll take care of checking the reduced motion thing for us. One last thing I'd like to think about carefully is reduce transparency. And when that's enabled, actually reduce the amount of blur and transparency using their designs to make sure everything is super clear. Now. Apple's own things, like the materials we saw back with Guess the Flag, take advantage of this automatically. They reduce the transparency for free. It'll just happen. But in your own code, just be extra careful to respect that setting. For example, we could say, uh, let's say we want to have accessibility, uh, reduce transparency. There it is. Uh, var reduce transparency. Boom. We could say our text here has some padding around it. But for its background, if we have reduced transparency, then make it fully black. Otherwise, we'll use black with opacity 0.5. Then foreground color of white, and then a clip shape of capsule. Let's give that a try. 
Um, might switch to light mode here so you can see more clearly what's going on. I've got a slight error here. Yeah, I got a scale effect mistake. Let's give it a quick try and hopefully we'll see how it looks. I will turn off light mode. That's uh, shift command A. It's got a sort of light gray background right now. If I go to our overrides, I enable them. I'll get rid of reduced motion and turn on reduced transparency. And you see it goes fully black straight away. So it's extra contrasty, a small change. Anyway. That completes the final technique required for this project. So I want to go ahead and put it back to its starting state. If you want to keep the optional animation thing stashed away in your little code library, go for it. Otherwise, just remove everything apart from text, hello world and padding. So we've got a nice clean state to start the real project on.